Right now at 10, we are on the weather watch. Rain returns after a beautiful weekend. The latest timeline and when severe weather may be possible. Tonight on Connecticut's news station, a violent weekend in the capital city. We have the latest on the investigations into two deadly shootings in Hartford overnight. Also, a historic church catches fire in one Connecticut city. We'll tell you how firefighters race to the scene to try and preserve it. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. First on Fox 61, Hartford police are busy investigating tonight at the end of a violent weekend in the capital city. Hello, I'm Samaya Hernandez. Thank you for joining us. Communities across the city are mourning tonight after two separate shootings left three people dead. Police quickly arresting 27-year-old Chan Williams Bay in connection with a shooting on Weathersfield Avenue in the south end of the city. That happened before 12:30 this morning. A Bloomfield man was killed and another was injured. The mayor and police chief speaking out hours ago, pointing to a backlog in the judicial system. They say Williams Bay should have been kept off the streets after detectives charged him with another man's murder back in 2021. Police say he was supposed to be home with GPS monitoring. Even though it's been about two years since the uh, initial shooting where he was trying to kill somebody in our community and where somebody died, uh, that case has been pending and he's been out for the last two years. And last night he killed somebody and wounded somebody else. There are people who have killed people. There are people who have shot people. There are people who have tried to kill people who are still out on pretrial release because their cases haven't been disposed of. Williams Bay should not have been out there to, to do this. Mayor Bronin also says the court backlog is creating public safety consequences in Hartford. Officers also responded to shots fired on Sterling Street early this morning in Hartford's north end. Two men were found on a porch with multiple gunshot wounds. They both died from their injuries. Hartford police say they haven't found any evidence that the two deadly shootings are related. Investigators say that both shootings were targeted attacks. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro has been talking with neighbors throughout the city about just what happened. He breaks down what we know so far. Two Hartford neighborhoods turned investigation scenes. I hear gunshots. Rapid gunfire, like automatic, like a, like a switch. One neighbor who did not want to be identified says he was around the area during the shooting at 675 Weathersfield Avenue. Police responded just before 12.30 a.m. Sunday. The victim who died, 24-year-old Jordan Phipps of Bloomfield. Police say another person was also injured. It needs to stop. The violence is crazy in Hartford. Tragedy also unfolding less than two hours later at 82 Sterling Street. That's where police responded just before 2 a.m. to find two victims who had been shot. 23-year-old William Tisdall and 27-year-old Hakeem Dixon, both from Hartford, both of them died. Gathering and looking at evidence on scene from Sterling Street, appears that we had three shooters, appears that this is a ambush style, very targeted attack. When we continue to see this, this inordinate amount of, of pain and hurt in our community, um, it, it's bound to be, you know, some conflicts. And when we have not learned and or been taught how to handle those conflicts without violence. Leaders with the brother Carl Hardrick Institute point to the summer months as especially violent with more people outside. We see that, you know, this issue with our young adults and even adults, you know, is, is an area that we really have to focus on in terms of, you know, how do we handle our frustration, our anger, and not resort to, to the gun violence. The Institute offers neighbors violence prevention training. Not only are we looking at conflict management or how to reduce conflict, but also empathy for your community and how to generate care and concern for those who are your neighbors. Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. 
Thank you, Angelo. Both shootings remain under investigation tonight. For a complete timeline of what happened, scan the QR code on your screen to download the free Fox 61 News app. You can also find it online at fox61.com. Well, turning pages now, time for a first look at the forecast with meteorologist Ryan Breton. And Ryan, I would give today a 10 out of 10 for summer days. It was beautiful. I agree. Not humid, plenty of sun, very warm, and it came on a Sunday. We have rain that's returning, but it's as we kick off the new work week. Hi, everybody. A couple of rounds of rain coming in the next few days. The first will actually be tomorrow morning. We'll have showers, downpours, maybe even some rumbles of thunder through about lunchtime. Then it should turn a little bit drier during the afternoon, but it still will be very humid. Then the next round of showers and thunderstorms coming in overnight tomorrow tomorrow night into Tuesday morning and a couple of those storms, even though they're happening at night, could be on the strong side. Here's a look at what's coming our way. You can see one piece here, another piece back to the west. This is the first one that comes in for tomorrow morning, and it looks like the morning commute will be turning wet in most parts of the state. Here's a look at the timeline. We'll go through the night by 3 a.m. We're mostly cloudy, but it's fairly warm, upper 60s to low 70s. By about 6 in the morning, showers, a few downpours developing in western Connecticut. This rain continues moving east, and it looks wet at times through the morning. Then the afternoon should turn somewhat drier with a mostly cloudy sky. It'll be very humid. Then another chance for showers and a few thunderstorms coming in tomorrow night. We'll talk more about the severe weather risk, the increasing humidity too. That's coming back with the rain. We'll see you in just a little while. Thanks, Ryan. New at 10, Naugatuck police are investigating after a man was shot in the leg. That happened just after 3 this morning. That man is 20 years old. He's currently being treated at a hospital and is expected to survive his injuries. Investigators spent the day at a suspected crime scene in the Cross Street commuter parking lot near exit 25 off of Route 8. The investigation continues tonight. Anyone with information about that shooting should call Naugatuck police. And new at 10, a man is dead tonight after he was found unresponsive at Rocky Neck State Park. Niantic firefighters say first responders were called to the beach around 1 this afternoon for a man in cardiac arrest. Lifeguards performed CPR on that man who was 78 years old. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Firefighters aren't sure if the man died from that drowning there. And a motorcycle driver is dead tonight after a crash on I-95 North in Westport. Police say Frank Brown of Waterbury was driving near exit 18 yesterday when he rear-ended a car in front of him. Brown hit a barrier and was thrown from the bike. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. No one in that car was hurt. And a girl is recovering from serious injuries tonight after she was hit by a car in Vernon. That all happened on Prospect Street just after 5 yesterday afternoon. Police haven't released many details about what happened or the girl's condition. We do know that investigators focused around an ice cream truck that was on that scene there. Neighbors tell us that they're concerned about the amount of, dri of drivers who speed down the street. You know, these cars are constantly going super fast. Yeah. It's dangerous. There's a lot of kids over here, and it's devastating what happened. I couldn't, I couldn't see it because I would never get that image out of my head. That's my worst fear. Whether she's 11 or 80, still somebody got hit by a car. It's somebody's kid. The person who hit the kid, uh, uh, them too, they're human. You know, I'm sure they didn't go out today figuring out they're going to hit somebody. But... If they're speeding around an ice cream truck, you can expect it, somebody. Vernon police say the driver is cooperating in that investigation. And new at 10, police in two Connecticut towns are looking for two burglary suspects. Canton police say three men ran away from a house in Simsbury when two people who live there came home. The gold car that the men drove was spotted near Red Fox Run in Canton. One suspect was taken into custody there. Officers say they're looking for the other two men along Gracie Road between Route 44 and Red Fox Run. A state police canine team is also helping Canton and Simsbury police. If you see the two other suspects, you should not approach them. You are urged to call 911 to report their location. 
And new at 10, a historic church caught fire in Norwich. A Norwich police officer spotted that fire at the Taftville Congregational Church around 10 last night. The city's fire department says the church was fully engulfed in flames. When firefighters got there, nobody was inside the church at the time of the fire. Taftville firefighters say the church was saved. The cause of that fire is under investigation. And new at 10, a New Britain firefighter is recovering from injuries after an apartment house caught fire on Park Street this afternoon. The city's fire chief says that the fire started on the second floor of that home before spreading up to the third. Everyone inside of the house got out safely as firefighters arrived. The firefighters injured the firefighter that was injured. His injuries are described as mild. And new at 10, three people are displaced tonight after an apartment fire broke out on Prospect Street, and that was in Manchester. The town's fire department says the fire was on the second floor of a three-story unit where at least two people were unable to evacuate. Crews were able to safely rescue them. Three units are now destroyed from that fire from, with smoke damage. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And new at 10, a high school student in New York City is charged with what's being called a hate motivated murder in the killing of a professional dancer. O'Shea Sibley was stabbed to death last weekend at a gas station in the city. He was reportedly dancing to a song by Beyonce when a group of men began yelling homophobic slurs at him. Investigators say one man then stabbed Sibley during an argument. NYPD is still investigating the killing. Sibley was 28 years old. And also in New York City, a video game influencer is facing riot charges after chaos broke out in Manhattan's Union Square on Friday. Kai Sinat had posted on social media that he would be giving away free video game consoles. Thousands of mostly young people went to the area and mayhem broke out. People were seen throwing bottles. Items were taken from a construction site at the park. 66 people were arrested. About half of them were under 18. Three police officers were hurt. New York City's Mayor Eric Adams says he believes that there may have been some outside agitators. Uh, we believe there were some outside influences that may have attempted to aggravate this situation. People came from outside of the city uh, to be there, and I, I want us to, we're further looking into where there's some even outside agitators. You don't come to get free Game Boys and bring smoke bombs and bring M80s and bring other disruptive items. NYPD is still investigating and officer say Sinat could face more charges in this case. Well, the Mega Millions jackpot continues to grow after no one won Friday night's jackpot. And since no one matched all six numbers, the top prize has now grown to $1.55 billion. And while no one took home the jackpot, one ticket was sold in Connecticut worth $20,000, another sold in New York State worth a million. There have now been 31 straight drawings without a jackpot winner. The next drawing is on Tuesday at 10 59 p.m. and you can watch it on our sister station the CW20. Well we have much more coming up on the Fox 6